Chinese authorities are pushing people to return to work amid the floundering economy due to the virus outbreak, but there are reports of confirmed cases emerging in factories, raising fears. A man from Wuhan told us local hospitals have kicked out patients with other illnesses, like cancer, to make room for coronavirus patients. He added 15 of his relatives and friends in Wuhan were confirmed to have the coronavirus. Three of them have already died. The first reported case of human-to-animal transmission. Hong Kong authorities have confirmed a dog contracted the coronavirus from its owner. Supermarkets around the world are running out of toilet paper and other items amid fear of the virus. We interviewed a psychologist to find out the reason why. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm your host, Tiffany Meyer. Some areas in Wuhan are on complete lockdown, whereas in other areas, every few days, a few are allowed out for a short time to buy necessities. Here, we see empty streets with very few people outside shopping. Those who do go out are wearing masks. Otherwise, the city is silent. Many residents' blocks are surrounded with temporary walls. And because of the lockdown, many residents can only get food delivered to their home. China's vice premier recently visited a residential block in Wuhan. Residents who have been put on lockdown for over 40 days shouted with anger from inside the buildings. Fake everything is fake. Residents also shouted, we eat vegetables that are very expensive. Recently, Wuhan authorities said residents can buy food at reasonable prices, but many netizens said it is not true. Now to the temporary hospitals in Wuhan. We previously reported that the criteria for patients to be discharged from temporary hospitals were largely loosened to fulfill orders from upper-level authorities that every patient in Wuhan should be sent to a hospital. This led to many patients who still showed severe symptoms being released. Many patients tested positive again later. Recently, a 36-year-old patient died suddenly, five days after being discharged from a temporary hospital during quarantine in a hotel. His death certificate showed he died from the coronavirus. His discharge document from the hospital stated he had a normal body temperature for at least three days, showed obvious improvement of the symptoms in his respiratory system, and tested negative for the virus two times. The original post from his wife on Chinese social media has since been deleted by authorities. According to China state-run media, a temporary hospital in Wuhan has now decided to add blood and virus antibody tests for patients who are supposed to be released. Another temporary hospital got an instruction to suspend patient discharge. And surprising news from the wild animal market in Wuhan, which is said to be the origin of the coronavirus. A family of four was discovered during a disinfection happening recently, to have lived there the whole time. And yet none of them are infected with the coronavirus. They are now staying at a hotel. And now to Li Wenliang, the name of the whistleblower doctor who tried to warn the public about the coronavirus and was then silenced by authorities. He later died from the virus. His name has become a hot topic again recently, with many people searching it on the internet. He was honored as a model worker by the Health Commission for fighting against the coronavirus. Netizens do not seem to be willing to accept this result. Most of them are calling for the Chinese regime to apologize and publish published the results of an investigation into his case. A netizen commented on Li Wenliang going from someone who violated the so-called rules in China to being honored as a hero, saying no need to correct the unjust case, adding it's already itself a joke that the murderer corrects the unjust case of the victim. Another netizen wrote, we do not want the dead to be given a title. I want freedom of press. People in China are resuming work, and many cities, including Beijing and Shanghai, reportedly confirmed cases of the virus emerged in factories. At a shipyard in Shanghai, employees have to wait in lines to get their body temperature measured before going to work and again before leaving. In one factory in a coastal city in southeast China, a worker collapsed to the ground. And in a long-distance bus ride from Hunan province to a coastal city, a worker who had a fever died in the bus. Chinese state-run media did not report such cases. People are linking them to the coronavirus and are concerned that resuming work could worsen the outbreak. So what about pets? 
Hong Kong health authorities confirmed on Wednesday a dog was confirmed to have contracted the coronavirus from its owner. Experts say it's likely the first reported case of human-to-animal transmission. Well, I think this dog have a low level of um, infection. It's confirmed. Even the blood result haven't been uh, out yet. According to experts, it's likely the human infect the dogs. And we understand um, the virus, they don't break guidelines, they, you know, and they cause boundary. And sometimes animals infect human and sometimes the other way around. Authorities say the dog, a Pomeranian, will remain in quarantine for further testing. Authorities are warning people to avoid kissing their pets, but also not to abandon them. We previously reported on locusts that could be on their way to China. Now another pest is already entering China, the fall army worm moth. On Thursday, Chinese authorities said the fall army worm has already invaded China. By February 10th, this pest had hit about 100,000 acres, which is nine times more than last year. This year, it's estimated that about 16 million acres will be hit. That's about 6 percent of China's agricultural land. To make room for coronavirus patients, Wuhan hospitals have been kicking out cancer patients, impacting over 7,000 tumor patients. That's according to a man originally from Wuhan who now lives in Canada. NTD's April Zhu has the details. For Mr. Wu, who was originally from Wuhan and is now living in Canada, coronavirus is terrifying. Fifteen of his friends and relatives in Wuhan are confirmed to have coronavirus. Three of them have passed. Wu's voice has been distorted to protect his identity. All of my friends and family are facing the same problem. Their infections can't be confirmed. Wu said diagnostic reports of two of his relatives describe coronavirus symptoms, but the hospital won't confirm the infection and ask them to go home. He said both relatives infected their family members. As long as the patient can't be diagnosed as having the coronavirus, they will have to pay for their own expenses. If it's confirmed, then the state has to pay for it. Wu has a friend who is a doctor in a Wuhan hospital. He says his friend told him lots of patients are emptied from the hospital to make room for coronavirus patients, including those who have cancer. It's very common and very cruel because they also kick cancer patients out of the hospital. His doctor friend said, Cancer patients had tubes removed and were asked to go home on February 15th. About 7,000 patients who have tumors have been impacted. Wu said it was easier to be admitted into the hospitals after February 22nd, possibly because the hospitals also moved virus patients with milder symptoms to makeshift hospitals. His doctor friend said, Three major hospitals in Wuhan have run out of N95 respirator masks since early February. Back then, about 150 medics in Wuhan Central Hospital were infected, and about 300 in Xiehe Hospital. Wu said he doesn't believe the outbreak has been contained. The coronavirus can only be contained if frontline medics have enough protective gear. That the so-called outbreak is under control is a joke, as long as the medics keep getting infected. And life for average Wuhan residents is also getting harder. Over 40 days into lockdown, people inside the city are not allowed to go out to buy their own food. The government will provide some vegetables every two to three days, some of them rotten, at a very expensive price. Several cabbages, some cucumbers, and several other items cost about $14, almost four times what it used to be. Seniors or unemployed people can't afford this. After seeing videos taken by citizen journalists of eight body bags in a funeral home van parked outside hospitals, Wu called his old neighbor who has been working at a local funeral home for over 20 years. His neighbor told him that he's really scared, as he never saw this many bodies. He said in early February, the funeral home was burning 120 bodies per day. And these bodies are those without family members following them. They're shipped to the funeral homes altogether using special channels. Wu said seeing death or infections among family members will leave deep wounds in Wuhan residents' hearts. He thinks Chinese citizens will realize that the Chinese Communist Party should be held responsible for the disaster and that the citizens will stand up and fight for their freedom. April Zhu, NTD News, New York. 
As China struggles to repair the economic damage caused by the virus outbreak, officials are pushing to get people back to work. But the risk of infection remains high, as well as other challenges like travel restrictions. China's economy has taken a huge hit with the virus outbreak. The most recent evidence, according to data from the China Passenger Car Association, released on March 4th, passenger car sales dropped 80 percent in February compared to the same period last year. Another indication, maps of NASA show China's measures to control the virus have resulted in a sharp drop in air pollution following the shutdown of industry production and transport. Um, so right now we're seeing um, drops in both carbon emissions as well as nitrogen dioxide. Carbon emissions are down by about 25 percent. Nitrogen dioxide is down by about uh, 30 percent. Nitrogen dioxide is typically produced by motor vehicles, power plants and factories. With deepening economic damage from the virus outbreak, Chinese officials are pushing to get more people back to work but risk spreading the virus further. One plastic producer had to shut down production after a worker was confirmed to be infected. The company has since resumed production. Those who try to return to work are facing challenges. Some had to go through several departments to get travel permission, and when they did get it, no one checked it. Our reporters talked to several people in different cities. One person in Shanghai said companies need to apply to local districts to resume work, and workers need to punch a health card every day. After about 20 days of healthy status, they're allowed to go back to work. It's a scary process to get inside to work. With people in protective suits checking your temperature, you need to pass several checkpoints. According to a news report by Taishin, a Chinese financial publication, officials have been inspecting electricity consumption as an indicator of production capacity. But in return, some companies are running their machines idle, keeping lights and air conditioning on day and night to meet the goals. According to Taishin as one example, in Hangzhou City, the real level of resuming production is around 20 to 40 percent. And in several countries, people are panic buying toilet paper and other goods amid news of the virus. But what's behind the panic? NTD's Miguel Moreno has more from a psychologist who says it's a normal response, but the fear does come with consequences. Supermarket shelves are being cleaned out in several countries amid news of the novel coronavirus. So this is Coles North Rocks, toilet paper aisle, absolutely non left. Search hashtag toilet paper gate on Twitter and countless pictures and videos of the massive buying sprees come up. But toilet paper is just one item. In the U.S. people are stocking up on hand sanitizer and other goods even though no shortages have been announced. Psychologist Dr. Robert Reiner from Behavioral Associates told us people do tend to overreact. You know, based on the available data, it doesn't seem like a normal reaction if uh, a person were behaving rationally, but of course we know that human beings have a tendency to overreact. However, he said he hasn't seen a reaction like this before and that it's probably because the virus, according to U.S. data, has a 2% fatality rate, 20 times higher than the flu. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization said it's 3.4% this week, but Dr. Reiner also pointed to social influence. They, they don't want to be the one just left short of getting into the party. Uh, in this case, they want to make sure that they're taken care of or they're taking care of their family. So if people see other people doing it, they're going to run out to the store. He added that hysteria is never a good thing and it can have consequences like shortages. Miguel Moreno, NTD News, New York. The U.S. Coronavirus Task Force is stepping up its game. Vice President Mike Pence says the federal government is sending out 1.5 million coronavirus test kits to hospitals across the U.S. He's also urging Americans to use common sense. Vice President Mike Pence and other members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force are expanding so their efforts to combat today, the infection and America's ability to test for it. States. He explained that in a briefing late Wednesday that 1.5 million virus test kits are being distributed to hospitals nationwide. Is that we do have about 1.5 million test kits going out as we speak to hospitals, uh, particularly uh, hospitals in areas that have seen coronavirus cases. He also announced that now every state health lab and university lab can conduct a coronavirus test on a request basis. Speaking about the team's objective, 
Pence said they're aiming to reach a point where any American who has a concern is able to go to their doctor and know that there's a virus test available. But our objective ultimately, and as quickly as possible, is to have tests made through these commercial laboratories and commercial providers that your local doctor, your, your CVS, your med check is able to have a coronavirus test. He added that the task force is hoping to get there in a matter of weeks. Thank you to working with and challenging commercial labs. Domestic Reiterating cases. that the risk and of contracting of the infection in the U.S. remains low. He urged Americans to take extra precautions and use common sense, common sense practices. Like staying at home when you're sick, steering clear of contact with sick people, washing your hands often, and avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. California reported its first death from the virus yesterday, raising the U.S. death toll to 11. This says over 160 others remain infected, including a little less than 50 who were evacuated from the Diamond Prince's cruise ship docked in Japan and put into quarantine. Congress is moving forward with its plan to fight the coronavirus. Today, the Senate passed the House's proposed $8.3 billion funding bill, which will go towards prevention and developing a vaccine. The bill is passed. With all but one senator in support, the Senate passed an $8.3 billion emergency funding measure proposed by the House on Thursday. The bill includes $3 billion for vaccine research and over $2 billion for preventative measures. It also includes $500 million to expand access to health services for senior citizens. They're considered the most at-risk group alongside those who suffer from underlying health problems. As the government ramps up its efforts, companies are doing the same. Manufacturer 3M has sped up testing and production of single-use N95 respirator masks. They're designed to filter 95% of airborne particles. Vice President Mike Pence visited a 3M factory in Minneapolis, Minnesota on Thursday. 3M in particular plays a vital role. Uh, in making medical equipment available. Pence, who's heading the U.S. Virus Task Force, has said the federal government is seeking 35 million additional masks per month from 3M. Meanwhile, on the West Coast, a Carnival Ocean liner has been barred from returning to San Francisco until all its passengers are tested. At least 20 people aboard fell ill due to two infected passengers who took a previous cruise on the ship. In response, California's Governor Gavin Newsom declared a statewide emergency. Cruise operators are among the worst hit by the epidemic, especially the Diamond Princess, which was quarantined off the coast of Japan in February. The vice president reiterated today that the virus risk to Americans remains low. He's also urging people not to purchase masks unless you're sick, citing that it's better to save them for health care providers. And in South Korea, people are stocking up on the basics by mail order. E-commerce is soaring amid fears of catching the coronavirus. Online orders are soaring in South Korea as millions of people are working from home amid surging coronavirus cases. It's a race against the clock for delivery employees to mask up, disinfect and load boxes. Jung Im Hong runs packages for delivery site Coupang. In the past, we used to go out with the truck half full, but these days there's so much to deliver, there are packages left over after filling the truck completely. Even before the epidemic, Euromonitor data shows that South Korea was already on track to become one of the world's biggest e-commerce markets, number three behind China and the United States. South Korea has also had the biggest surge in number of virus cases, which has further sped up the shift to shop online. As of mid-February, Coupang has seen deliveries jump to 3 million a day from just over 2 million late last year. The virus has also forced delivery workers to abide by a variety of procedures, from wearing face masks at all times to walking through thermal detectors before coming into work every day. All the extra stuff being ordered are low-cost items. Microwavable rice, diapers, kitchen towels and more are all being ordered in mass, while the cost of delivering the goods skyrockets. Coupang was already struggling on the path to profitability in a highly competitive market with South Korean conglomerates like Shinsegae and Latte. For now, Coupang's hired a wave of new delivery workers to keep up with all those people isolated at home. Only time will tell if that investment pays off. 
The airline industry is being hit hard by the coronavirus outbreak. The industry is expected to lose over $100 billion in revenue this year as demand for air travel falls. One British airline has collapsed and United Airlines is cutting back on flights. The airline industry may face significant losses in revenue this year due to the coronavirus outbreak, says the International Air Transport Association, or IATA. They're expecting the decline to be as bad as in the 2008 financial crisis. We could see the effect on revenues uh, exceed 100 billion, around about 19 percent of uh, global passenger revenues. Now, this would be a revenue shock equivalent to what was seen in the global financial crisis. Crisis. With less air travel, there will be less business for other sectors, including restaurants and hotels, causing a ripple effect on the global economy. In the SARS outbreak of 2003, travel patterns went back to normal after about six or seven months. The chief economist of IATA says even if that's the case for the coronavirus, Asia Pacific Airlines may take a much bigger hit from this outbreak because China's travel market is now much bigger. He expects the industry to stabilize in the summer. We will see uh, a recovery to pre-crisis levels, um, you know, late summer, third, third quarter. Drops in flight demand causing the already struggling British airline Flybe to go under. United Airlines to reduce flights, stop hiring and ask employees to take unpaid leave as demand for travel drops. A medical advisor at IATA giving reassurance that normal contact between people sitting a few feet from each other is not risky. And uh, the airplane environment is probably less so than in this room right here because your average jet airliner has an air change rate that's 10 times what this room is. IATA officials saying medical experts in agreement that air travel is safe and there are no known cases of the virus spreading on an airplane. Intellectual property rights are safer following the appointment of a new director general of the World Intellectual Property Organization, a Singaporean who got the job instead of a candidate from China. The outcome is seen as helping stop intellectual property rights from falling prey to the Chinese communist regime. A Singaporean beat a Chinese candidate in the race to lead the World Patent Office. It's a significant move as it heads off Beijing's bid for a fifth UN leadership role. Darren Tang defeated fellow legal expert Wang Bingying in a closed-door vote on March 4. The Chinese candidate, Bingying, had previously drawn criticism for allowing counterfeiting and illegal expropriation of intellectual property. Dozens of countries voted on who would become the next director general for a six-year term. Intellectual property has been at the heart of a trade war between Washington and Beijing. When IP is stolen, counterfeit goods can be produced and sold. The U.S., along with many other Western countries, had backed the Singaporean candidate, Daring Tang, for the job. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said last month that Washington was following the Patent Office vote very, very closely as the outcome could be critical. Chinese IP thefts cost the American economy between $200 and $600 billion annually. 85% of counterfeits seized at U.S. borders come from China. The U.S. believes the Chinese regime has a broader strategy to gain control over the 15 specialized agencies of the U.N. China already has its nationals heading four of those agencies, which is more than any other member state. Experts say the world can no longer turn a blind eye to one of the worst atrocities committed in modern times. The UK-based People's Tribunal released its final report on two decades of forced organ harvesting of prisoners of conscience in China. Our France correspondent David Vives met with a surgeon who testified at the tribunal. He says he was forced to kill a prisoner in China. Surgeon Envier Toti will never forget the day in August 1995 when he removed an organ from someone against their will. It was a hot day in China's hilly Xinjiang region. Toti's chief told him to exit the hospital where he was working and go to an execution site without saying what he would do. I can see their executed bodies lying down at the slope of the mountains. Maybe 20, I don't know. Toti said he heard rifles going off at the same time and was told to come in. And he they called me to, uh, to the side and they briefed me what to do. He said, that one is yours. They said to remove liver and the two kidneys. The prisoner was a Uyghur. Uyghurs are an ethnic, mostly Muslim minority in Xinjiang. 
Like Chinese Christians, Tibetans, and Falun Gong practitioners, the Chinese regime has also cracked down on Uyghurs. Then from that moment on, I become a robot. And uh, when I started cutting through, I can see there was bleeding. It means the heart is, was still bumping the blood. That means he was alive. And also when I cut, his body tried to struggle. Toti said the bullet was not meant to kill the man, yet. I think I'm technically, I killed him. 25 years after that day, Toti moved to London. He said it took him many years to understand how the Chinese regime brainwashes its own people to the point of making them do things humans would never do. When I start learn English and uh, be able to read what's going on in this world, then I understood there's concept of human rights and there's concept of civilization. Then that kind of, you know, uh, secret, that uh, proud, buried in my heart, come out again. Today, Toti continues to testify about his experience to alert the public and end what he says, in his own words, is an atrocity. Drawing on various forms of evidence, the China Tribunal interim judgment states there are certain unanimous to ensure beyond reasonable doubt that forced organ harvesting from prisoner of conscience has been practiced for a substantial period of time, including a very substantial number of victims. David Vives, NTD News. And on the video side, over 80,000 people are requesting that YouTube explain why channels covering the coronavirus are demonetized, meaning the channels lose their ability to earn money through ads. Some videos are even taken down. YouTube's response is that videos that cover the coronavirus fall under their sensitive topics guideline and thus can't be monetized. But this seems in conflict with the ideals of free speech. A petition started in late February is requesting that YouTube explain why channels that cover the coronavirus are censored. The petition aims to garner 100,000 signatures by March 22nd to get a response from the White House. Here at China in Focus, we shine a light on the true situation inside China. Recently, many of our subscribers have told us they were unsubscribed from our channel. If you haven't been getting notifications, you can find us here six days a week at around 9.30 at night Eastern Time. You can also find us on Twitter. Thank you and see you next time.